Sean, you could have just kept going. We were good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome to Macomb Wesley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Scott Grolke. Serving with me is Pastor Melly Momo. Please complete a connection card sometime during the service today so that you can deposit it at the exit on your way out. There are opportunities for your relationship to us and to Jesus Christ. They're a part of this connection card. We are excited to announce the birth of Oliver David Cook to Clayton and Sarah. Actually, I should say Sarah and Clayton because <laughs> guys we know who's really doing the hard work. We congratulate their family. Our theme today is love. The love that is a sign that we are the people of Jesus Christ. Now our sign of love is expressed each summer. One of the signs of our love each summer we express in streaming waters. Carolyn Grove comes to offer an invitation to you. Good morning. For those of you who are not familiar with what we do every summer, but every June, um, we do mission work, and it's local mission work throughout McDonough County, and we do minor home repairs, yard work, we might build a ramp, might stain a deck, there's a lot of things that we do, but we're looking for your help this year. Um, if you're especially new and never helped us before, we'd hope you'd consider helping us. If you've done it for years, we would very much enjoy your help again. There's three different ways you can help us. We have a prayer team that a lot of people pray at home or they come into the sanctuary to pray for us before, during um, the work week. We have the kitchen help, which we much need because we all like to be fed during that week. And then we have the workers who actually go out and do the work. So we're encouraging people to go ahead and sign up. I know some people's busy schedules and they may not know what they're doing, but it's the week of June the 13th through the 17th. And if you can help in any way, shape, or form, um, if you can do minor construction, if you can paint, basically I say if you can move your arm like this, we can put you to work. So there's always something that you can do because we need runners to go get us supplies. There's, there's all kinds of things that you can do to help us out. But we are putting our schedule and we're making um, our final decisions on who we can help. We have about 30 homeowners that we're seriously looking at trying to help, but we need the volunteers. It takes about 110 volunteers to do that much work during that um, work week. And uh, we're a little shy on people signing up. If you're not sure what you can do to help us, go ahead and give us your name and phone number and we can contact you when it gets closer and let you know what we need. You can do a part day, which may be four hours. You can do all day, eight hours. You can do once a week. You can do all five days in the week. We're very flexible, and we would just greatly hope that um, you'd be able to help us out. We want to share God's love and spread it throughout McDonough County, but we need your help to do so. Thank you.
recognize all of our graduates that are a part of Wesley United Methodist Church. We have four high school graduates we want to recognize this morning. Um, and I just want to say before we show their pictures and recognize them, part of the reason we're not bringing the graduates forward is because, which is no surprise to any of you, I'm sure, many of our high school seniors are busy doing other things in the church this morning, including working up in the balcony or working in the nursery. So they're a little preoccupied this morning, but we still wanna recognize and honor them. And we have prayer shawls and other presents from the prayer shawl team and the Christian education team that we'll present them with today. Um, not during the service, because as I said, they're all a little busy doing things and making service happen. So we wanna recognize and congratulate them for that as well. So um, first up of our graduates, we have Jacob Rouse. Jacob is graduating from the high school. He will be attending SIUC, Carbondale, my alma mater, which is awesome, um, in the engineering field, and will be doing Air Guard and Air Force ROTC. Um, I gave each of the graduates a chance to kind of put something personal up there if they wanted to, and Jacob chose a quote from one of his teachers, every day you are above ground is a good day, and if you are breathing, you can deal with it feel like that's helpful. And if you know Jacob, that's no surprise that that's a quote that he's fond of. So next up, we have uh, Kylie Daniels. Kylie is graduating from the high school with honors. She is going to be attending WIU. I don't know if you all know where that is, but I think it's just over the hill. Um, she'll be attending WIU, um, focusing on biology with an emphasis in zoology and minoring in ag animal science. Uh, she plans for uh, this summer to have an internship at the vet clinic in Bushnell, along with working at WIU and helping with stuff around the church as well. So she's going to be quite busy uh, this summer and beyond, but she'll be in our backyard, which is wonderful. Next, we have Sally Anderson. Or Sarah Dunlap's next. That works too. <laughs> Sarah Dunlap is next. Uh, Sarah is actually uh, helps out in the nursery quite a bit. Uh, she is graduating from... The high school and she plans to attend Butler University and wants to focus on English uh, and creative writing. So we are thankful for Sarah and all she does to help out in the nursery as well as other areas of the church. And then last but certainly not least is Sally Anderson. Sally is graduating from the high school. She will be attending Illinois Central College and will be exploring other options beyond Illinois Central College. She's undecided on her major yet but she's got plenty of time to figure that out. She is grateful for all her experiences at Wesley Church and all the people who have helped her grow in her faith. And I think that's something all of our graduates would say as well. So we just want to take a moment to congratulate and honor all of our graduates this morning. So let's give them a round of applause. And now if the kids can come up for children's moments. <laughs> My name is the church. You are the church. We are the church together. more coming up there this way. <laughs> How are you ladies doing this morning? Good. Tired? A little bit. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I can relate. Are we enjoying the nice warm weather? Hey! <laughs> oh, careful. <laughs> There's steps there. <laughs> they make comfy seats though. So, I just talked about some of our high school kids who are graduating. Do you guys know what it means to graduate? You've heard that word before, right? So to graduate means to, in this case, they're leaving the high school and going on to college. But graduate could just be a fancy word for growing up or moving up in the world. They're moving up to a different thing. They were in high school and now they're leaving high school and going off to college and doing work and other things. So they're growing up and they're growing and learning beyond high school, right? 
And something I hope that the graduates take with them when they go to college, not physically take, because I really hope they take a lot of their books and their Bible and all that fun stuff, but some knowledge and some things I hope they take with them are stuff they learned right here in this church, right? Because I want them to take the love of their community with them and take the knowledge of their faith with them so they can help others. Because one of the things we're talking about this morning is love. And what are some things you guys think about when you think about love? What are some things that come to mind? Being kind, yeah. Maybe our families, right? We love each other. We love our family. Maybe we love to eat, right? We can love physical things too, like eating, or maybe we like giving hugs, right, to our friends, or, you know, handshakes or something like that to show our love and to show care to one another. And how do we show love to people? Just by being kind, right? Yeah, we can be kind to one another, maybe help someone when they need help, kind of like uh, Carolyn talked about with Streaming Waters. That's a way of showing love, right, to people, is by helping them when they're in need. So I hope as our graduates grow up, and I hope as you guys continue to grow up every day in your faith and grow in who you are, that we can show love to everybody, just like Jesus taught us and just like our church family teaches us. And we can do that by being kind to one another, maybe holding open a door for somebody, or even just saying, excuse me, if someone is in our way, that's a kind thing we can do, right? Just say, excuse me, and walk on by. Those are some nice, kind things we can do to show love to one another. So I hope we can do that, and I hope our graduates do that too, no matter where they go in this world, as they remember to love one another, just as Jesus taught us. So can we fold our hands and bow our heads and pray this morning? Oh, yes, let's pray. <laughs> That is a good way to show love, too, all the presents. So. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you so much for bringing us together this morning to celebrate you and your love for us. Help us to take your love out into the world wherever we go, whether we're graduating and moving on to big and amazing things, or whether we're just going home and seeing our friends and family for a long weekend. Whatever we do, we hope we can share your love with one another. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much, you guys. You can head back to your seats. Good morning. Thank you, Kim. God is good all the time. I'd like to recognize Jacob Clemente, who was baptized last Thursday. Thank God. And we want to pray of thanksgiving for Oliver David. Born to Sarah and Clayton Cook. And also baby Charlie, who is at home. So we thank God for the babies. And we also lift um, the family of Kent Oster and the baby Rodney and uh, Bethel's great grandkids great-grandson who is uh, in uh, intensive care, so we leave them in, uh, the baby and the parents, in our prayers as well. <clears throat> so let us go to the throne of God in prayer. Lord of grace, Lord of love, God of power, we praise your name this morning, Lord, for allowing us to come together to worship you. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you have given us, you have granted us, Lord. We thank you for the gift of life as we celebrate baby Oliver, David, and Charlie, baby Charlie is now home. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for the baby of Brett as well, Brett as well. We ask that, Lord, you reach out to that unit, intensive unit, that you touch the baby and help him be well. Be with the family as well. We pray for all those who are not feeling well, asking for that healing power to touch them, Lord, so that we'll be able to give you praise again, we'll be able to worship. 
We also pray, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones, as we remember the family of Mary Etten. We remember, Lord, the family of Kent Osto, and many others who have lost loved ones. We leave them in your hands, asking, Lord, for your comfort. Comfort them, Lord, during this time of loss. Fill out that empty chair. We praise you, Lord, for you are worthy. Asking that your Holy Spirit will continue moving upon our hearts. Wherever we may be found, that you continue ministering to us according to the needs. Lord, we praise you. For you are our God. Nothing can compare with you. Remember our country, Lord, and lifting our leaders in your hand and asking that, Lord, you give the wisdom so that they will be able to lead this country according to your will. Lord, we rebuke all powers of darkness against us in the name of Jesus. Bless us, we pray. Bless us. Lift all the Christians, all the people worshiping you this hour or today, wherever they are lifting your name high, let your spirit be with them. Thank you for your words that you have made available for us to encourage, to encourage us in our work, Lord. We give you praise. Hear our voices, hear our prayers as we lift our voices saying the way your son, Jesus Christ, Continue to teach us, our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power in the glory forever. Amen. So we pray now for the offering. Lord of grace, we thank you, Lord, for this time of giving, asking that you bless what we're about to give. Multiply it for your work. Bless the source of providence. Bless also those who don't, know, don't have it today, so that tomorrow they will be able to support your work. Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our Old Testament reading is coming to us from Psalm 107, verse 1 to 9. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his first love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in, gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert west, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, they are so fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, for he satisfies the thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. I invite you to stand for the reading of the word. The gospel is John chapter 13, beginning in verse 31. Now he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified. And God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I'm with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I've loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The word written and living in Jesus Christ, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Lord God, may the words of love that we speak today and that we hear today be integrated within our souls, our minds, our hearts, our living, through Jesus Christ. Amen. The psychology professor did not have any children of his own. He had a pattern of scolding the neighbor whenever she scolded her son. He would say, you should love the boy, not discipline him. One hot summer day, the professor was out repairing his concrete sidewalk. After several hours in the hot sun, he laid down his trowel, wiped the perspiration from his forehead and noticed out of the corner of his eye the young boy, the mischievous young boy was putting his foot into the fresh concrete. The professor ran over to scold him and the boy's mother leaned out the window and said, remember professor, you must love the child. The professor said, well I do love him in the abstract but not in the concrete. This sermon is really for me, but you're welcome to listen in. I'm good at talking about love in abstract terminology, but I have trouble putting it into, into concrete action. John's Gospel, chapter 13, is the beginning of the end. Jesus is taking time out with his circle of friends. He starts his farewell discourse calling them little children. 
a suggestion that we're always in process, aren't we? Then he gets to the essentials. He says, death will take him. God will be glorified. A new commandment will be given that will prove they are his followers. He said, a new commandment I give you that you love one another just as I've loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Can, can we focus today on just one thing? Just one thing? This commandment of love 2,500 years before the Gospels was a book of worship called Leviticus. Chapter 19, verse 18 says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus also talked about the great commandments, the greatest of them. He's referring to Moses. Love the Lord your God with all your being and your neighbor as yourself. So the concepts are not new. What is unique is the application. Love one another as I have loved you. It's a commandment supported by a concrete example. Love as I have loved you. Jesus went on to say, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples. He did not say, they will know you are my disciples because you, you have a language of love. You, you talk about it. A lot you talk about it. Elizabeth Browning spoke the language of love. She wrote, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being an ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. Browning is profound, deep, poetic. Her words deserve our reflection. Behind her abstract thoughts, I'm pretty sure Miss Browning was in love. Words of love are abstractions that may never add up to substance. Gary Jones was rector of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Richmond, Virginia. He said, the commandment is not about what you believe, it's about how you live. So, Loving is not about what you think or believe or what you say. It's about what you do. Ideas, beliefs, talk mean nothing without substantial loving action. Jesus did not say, I command you to have a debate, a detailed conversation about the meanings and nuances of love. Keep the dialogue going. We've had couples in this church who've been married more than 70 years. They didn't get there because they knew how to debate the meaning of love. They arrived because they put love into concrete action. Jesus said a new commandment, I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. His commandment of love is based on his example of love. He first loved us. The first epistle of John, chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us 
and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. I've seen it, heard it, felt it. I've known Jesus loves me. Now I need to put love into practice. This is not rocket science today, is it? Love is contagious. Dr. Albert Schweitzer won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1952. He took his medical knowledge and his Christian faith to the jungles of Gabon, Central Africa. He was also famous for practicing love. When lecturing at the University of Chicago, a group of reporters cornered him at Union Station as they talked. A woman carrying a heavy suitcase came slowly walking by. Dr. Schweitzer excused himself for a moment, gently took the woman's suitcase and accompanied her to her boarding car. When he returned where he left the reporters, they were all trying to find a woman whose suitcase they could carry. Love is contagious. Jesus said a new commandment I give you that you love as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know you are my disciples. You are my followers. By this they will know. His commandment of love is based on his example of love which becomes a sign of love through us. By this they will know you are my disciples, that you love one another. I was disappointed to read this, but not, not entirely surprised. A national study by the Episcopal Church appeared in last month's issue of Christian Century. It found that Christians have a favorable view of themselves as giving, loving, respectful, friendly. However, it found that non-Christians say of Christians that they are hypocritical, judgmental, self-centered, and arrogant. Ouch. If that's how we're perceived, we have our work cut out. Hypocritical, judgmental, self-righteous, and arrogant. Jesus said, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. They will not know we are his followers if we just talk about love like I'm doing right now. They will not know we are his followers because we demonstrate miraculous power. They will not know we are Christians by how fast our congregation grows. They will not know we are Christians by our rules, our rituals, our regulations. They will not know we are followers of Jesus because of the hours we spend in prayer, though God knows we need it. They will not know if we don't get along. They will know we are Christians. They will know we are followers of Jesus by our love for one another. Love is contagious. Elias Shakur is a retired archbishop of the Greek Catholic Church. He once served as priest in the town of Ibilan in northern Israel. The building was dilapidated. The congregation was argumentative. The community was filled with violence. Shakur writes, One Palm Sunday, our church was full of stony-faced, hostile people 
Instead of pronouncing the benediction, I walked down the aisle and locked the doors. Came back to the front, and I said to the people, sitting in church doesn't make you a Christian. Your words say you love God, but you hate your brother and sister. I've tried to unite you, but it could not. As I'm only a man, it is only through Jesus Christ that forgiveness and reconciliation are born. I will be silent so he can give you that power. Elias waited and waited. Finally, one man asked another man to forgive him. And they waited. And then another asked for forgiveness. And then reconciliation began. The villagers repaired the church. The Muslims and Christians together built a community center, a library, and a school called Mar Elias, where 4,000 Christians, Jews, and Muslims learned together. Because love is contagious. Jesus' command of love is based on his example of love, which becomes a sign of love in us, through us. Love is contagious. And so we turn to prayer. God, we know your written word speaks of love in many forms. It defines God as love and love as being born of God. Even more, we find that Jesus embodied love. He lived your word of love in human form. He commanded us to love and became the example of love. Now within this place, beyond these doors, may we initiate a contagion of love by our actions so others will see and know your love is present in the world and in us. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Shamari and Sean, for leading us. How do you put a benediction to love? You take it beyond the walls. You take the love you've known in Jesus beyond these walls in actions. Don't wait for streaming waters. It starts in about 
One minute. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> 